In this video, I'm going to show you how to hide Easter eggs and secrets within your STL files using a kind of exploit within 3D printing slices. Let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse. So not too long ago, I did a video on putting watermarks into your STL files for 3D printing which might help you protect those files should they get into the wrong hands or you need to prove that you are the original creator of that digital, uh, digital artifact. But this video is a little bit different. I am quite a fan of hiding little secrets within the files I release. And in fact, there's one file I've released that's been downloaded thousands of times, which has an Easter egg in it that only about 100 people have found so far. So, in this video, I want to show you a few techniques I've been working on and playing around with to hide geometry in plain sight. But to understand it, I first need to show you how an STL file actually works. So if you've been 3D printing, then you all know that STL files are the basis for everything you send to your 3D printer. You get the STL file from other 3D software by exporting it, and then you slice it and send it to your printer. So what I have here is Probably the simplest STL file possible. It's just one single triangle. So STL files are actually made up of tessellated triangles, but these triangles have some important features that you need to be aware of. For a start, they have a direction called a normal. So they face a certain direction. So in MeshMix, it will show you the direction the triangle's facing by showing the reverse side, which is the other side of the normal with this sort of uh, this stripy red pattern, whereas um, the actual normal side is shown with the color here. And this triangle has zero thickness. It's a zero thickness surface, which means it has no thickness, nothing, zero. It's impossible to reproduce in the real world. You have to have some sort of thickness in the real world, but in digital, you do not. But what does that mean when you're trying to 3D print things? Well, let me fire up a sphere. So what I have here is a sphere in STL format, and it has these little triangles tessellated around the entire shape. But remember that these triangles have zero thickness and they have a direction, that normal. So what a slicer does for 3D printing is it determines an enclosed area of these triangles and will then determine that that's a solid and fill it up. So that's what a slicer does. If you send this to a slicer, it will fill this up. But if I cut it in half, so just edit uh, plain cut and then do no fill at all, just cut this, you're back to a zero thickness surface. And if you send this to a 3D printer, it's not gonna like it. It's gonna refuse to 3D print it. However, if you view this from this side, it looks like a solid object. And if you view this in an STL viewer or even in the preview window before you slice in a slicer, it will look like it should be something. And that's where I first got the idea. Can you make geometry in STL format that doesn't get recognized by the slicing engine? Well, yes, you can. And let me show you what I have here is my spiky egg, dragon egg. It was done for a tutorial I did in Fusion 360 some time ago. This looks like a model that would slice fine. It looks like it would work fine, and you slice and send it to the printer. However, it's got a secret. So it's sliced and ready to send it to the printer, right? Well, let's have a look at the preview. What the heck is going on? That's right, I've actually made this model with a hidden lattice torture cube inside. So if you send this to the printer, it's going to print this, not the egg. And you might be wondering how I achieved that. Well, I did it with a very thin surface, not a zero thickness because if it was properly done with an export, it would be recognized as a solid. No, this is done with an incredibly thin wall and it takes advantage of the a slices an ability to actually recognize anything smaller than your nozzle diameter. Most 3D printers have a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. So if a surface is 0.1 or 0.05 millimeters, it's going to get ignored. And yes, there are some things you can tell a slicer to inflate surfaces and make them recognizable, but very rarely people will do this. And in this case, this surface, this egg, 
is actually so thin, it has a thickness of 0.05 that it just gets ignored. And instead, the internal geometry, which is this lattice torture cube, gets recognized. And you could hide literally anything in plain sight. So then when you go to slice it, it reveals its true geometry. So let me show you how I did this in Fusion. This is the egg in Fusion. And I, as I said, I did a whole tutorial on this. But the only thing I've changed is I've done a shell. And this shell, if I go to edit feature, is incredibly thin. You can see here that I've actually shelled the entire model to 0.05 millimeters thickness. So if I go to do a section analysis and just cut, I don't know, right through the side of the object, like that, that looks good. You can see it's incredibly thin now. This geometry is unprintable now on an FDM 3D printer, which means an FDM slicer will completely ignore it. So going back to slicer, there's a few tiny artifacts, which is interesting. Maybe just where the angle was enough for it to be recognized. And it does do the brim around that object, which is also interesting, but it ignores all other geometry. So you can hide things and no one would know until they go to slice it. But how far can you take this concept? Well, this is another idea I had. This is a mug and it's hard to see in the STL preview, but it says, love cooking, behave in the kitchen. Um, why does it say that? Well, I'm not very good at word games, that's why. But this mug has a secret as well. And I'm just gonna slice it in Idea Maker. So start and slice. And it slices fine and it's like, okay, would you like to send it to the printer? And a lot of people would just go straight ahead and send it to the printer because they're used to, you know, their settings are fine. But let's look at the G code preview. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> so if you printed this mug, it actually says, look behind you right there. And it's the same STL file you just saw in the preview, it's exactly the same as this one here. So how did I achieve this? Well, it's a little bit more complicated. This is how the mug looks in Fusion 360. And obviously it shows all the lines that you wouldn't see in the STL export. So it kind of gives it away, but this is made up with tons of separate bodies like this. And these bodies, if I select and hide the main mug, they are for a start separate. So they're separate shells in their own space, and they're also incredibly thin. So this O, for example, it looks substantial, but on the other side of it, if I spin this around, it's actually shelled, and it's actually a 0.05 millimeter thickness surface. So again, your slicer will go, no, no way can I print 0.05, I have a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, I can't do it, I'm going to ignore it. So all of these letters are actually unprintable, uh, and the slicing engine will just ignore them. So how I did the U and hid that is also a little bit different. So if I just bring the mug back, I'll show you, I actually have, the mug actually has these details, these letters indented into them, but I've hidden them with a very thin surface over the top of it. So like this Y, for example, here, um, it's a very thin surface as well. But depending on the slicer, it may actually give you forewarning of this kind of manipulation. So you notice in Idea Maker, it actually says that the model is invalid. It's got uh, non-manifold edges, which is the intersecting rubbish we've caused. And if we turn on wireframe, so view uh, show wireframe, it will kind of give it away as well. So it's not a perfect system, but it could be fun when you want to send something to friends and give them a hidden message in something or trick them or Easter eggs and that kind of thing where you don't know until you actually go to slice the file that it actually reveals its true nature. Now there's one other method that I've come up with which gets around all of this. It's not stuff that disappears, it's just stuff that's hidden within existing geometry you would normally print anyway. And jumping back into Slicer Prusa Edition, we have a Hexaspherikon. Now this looks like a normal Hexaspherikon that I've printed tons of times already on the channel. And if I slice it and go to preview, it looks like it works perfectly and it would, this would print fine. However, it also has a secret and you can sort of reveal it by looking underneath because I've made it a little bit obvious in this one. You see this here, it's got these weird indents. You're like, what is that for? I don't know what Angus is up to, but you can also scroll down through the object 
and there's some weird stuff going on there. Like, you know, what is actually happening in this model? And this will depend on the slicer, but I'm actually taking advantage of a quirk within slicer that merges objects that are very close to each other. So we previously were talking about objects that are too thin will be ignored by the slicer. In this case, I have another object that is so close to the outside walls of this one that it becomes one. So to show you the original, we need to fire up Mesh Mixer. And this is the same model within Mesh Mixer. And again, looking at the bottom, you can kind of see something's going on there. But to reveal this secret, we need to separate the shells, separate the separate bodies. So edit, separate shells. Ah, what's this trickery, Angus? Two shells in one model? Yes, if I hide one of them, or even just delete it, there's an entirely separate model hidden within this Hexaspherikon. It's a modified Hexaspherikon, a model I haven't actually released yet. It's just a test. And this can now be printed. But if we just try to print the regular one, which is nested together, it shows no errors and it would print and people would be none the wiser that there's actually another model hidden within this. So let me show you how I did that in Fusion. And here she is. I call this the Incepta Hexaspherikon. Incept Hexaspherikon. That, yeah, it's Inception. <laughs> so how I did this is simple. It's actually two separate objects very close to each other. So what I've got is a very, very small gap. This is 0.05 millimeters in thickness. And once you turn it into a hexaspherikon, which is slicing in half and rotating it all um, the right amount for the number of sides, you end up with four bodies instead of two. So we've got this outside one here, outside one here. But if I hide those, we also have my special modified one hidden within the object. And this only works because there's a tiny consistent gap between everything. You don't want to go too close though, because with STL files, again, going back to, to Mesh Mixer, STL files have no curves. Um, so if the object is too close together, then you might have these lines start intersecting with the outside and that's going to cause all manner of issues within your slicer. 0 0.05 or 0 0.1 seems to be a good distance that slicers will start to ignore it and you can actually start getting these objects to be effectively completely hidden within others unless people know how to look for it. So there you have it guys, ways you can hide geometry just in plain sight essentially in STL files and whether or not you want them to be printable or not, you can have things change and, and that sort of stuff. And it's really fun for, you know, jokes and Easter eggs, but let me be extremely clear here. In no way do I support the use of deception for criminal or malicious intent. I love 3D printing as a tool for creation, and I think this sort of thing is really fun to hide Easter eggs and stuff and just add a bit more joy into the models I release onto the internet, but in no way do I support, you know, manipulating or deceiving people for criminal or malicious intent. It is never my intention here on Maker's Muse to do that, and I want to make that extremely clear. It's actually my intention on Maker's Muse to empower your creativity through technology, and I hope I've done that here today. So if you did enjoy this video, guys, hit that subscribe button. It means a huge amount to me, and I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later, guys. Bye.